So armed with all these uh, observational tools, we have a pretty good idea of what the Milky Way is made of. In this first clip, let's sort of lay out the pieces, and later we'll study each of them in turn and see what we can say about them. So what is the Milky Way made of? Well, the Milky Way is mostly a disk of stars that are orbiting, and they have a sense in which they orbit, much as in the solar system. You imagine some primordial angular momentum being conserved. So the Milky Way has a north pole and a south pole, typically drawn to the top and the bottom of our images. Sorry, southern hemisphere dwellers. Um, and in the disk, in fact, the disk is broken up into two different components. This is a relatively recent find. There is a thin disk, um, only about uh, a third of a kiloparsec, so only about 300 parsecs thick, a thousand light years, and uh, with a radius of about 25 kiloparsecs. And remember the sun that way being eight kiloparsecs from the center is about a third of the way to the edge of the disk. Um, the thin disk has the bulk of the mass, the, the stars in the uh, galaxy. Uh, the stellar mass in the thin disk is about 60 billion solar masses. And the stars in the thin disk are by and large young. Their ages are less than 8 billion years. So the sun is certainly a young star. And the thin disk is surrounded by a thicker uh, disk with about the same radius, but three times the thickness. So uh, 3,000 light years, a kiloparsec in thickness. And the uh, total mass in the thick disk is uh, negligible, if you want, only 3 billion solar masses. But it's characterized, this population of the thick disk, and it's not that it's surrounded, of course. Uh, the thick disk permeates the thin disk um, as well, but uh, the stars are uh, scattered more diffusely. And uh, the thing that characterizes the thick disk, popu disk population <laughs> is that the ages of the stars are older, um, typically uh, 8 to 11 billion years, um, or, the, or 10 to 11, depending on uh, exactly where you draw the line, are the ages of the stars in the thick disk, so two distinct stellar populations, um, but the bulk is in the thin disk. Um, at the center is a bulge, uh, where the galaxy uh, bulges to a greater thickness. Of course, the disk thickens out as it approaches the bulge, but there is a distinct structure uh, called the bulge, and as it has been discovered in the past decade, it's actually not a sphere as drawn in this image, but it has a bar-shaped, um, and, it's, and therefore, uh, while its height is about 2 kiloparsecs, its uh, length along the long axis of the uh, bulge is 5 kiloparsecs. And this contains about 10 billion solar masses. Uh, the stars in the bulge have all kinds of ages. There are different populations, perhaps three different populations, including very young stars, 200 million years or younger, and some very old stars. And we'll talk about the bulge population. And this is the disk with the bulge, and then uh, surrounding all of this is the halo, uh, in which, for example, one finds the globular clusters orbiting. These are stars. Remember, they don't sit there. They are orbiting. So these are objects that are orbiting in, in uh, orbits with high inclination to the galactic plane. And um, so some of them might at any given time be inside the disk, but they would be distinguished because their velocity would then be perpendicular, roughly, to the direction of motion of the stars in the disk. And the mass of the halo stars is, again, uh, very small, only 3 billion solar masses. And the halo certainly contains the oldest stars in the galaxy. Their ages range between 11 and 13 billion years. That's essentially the age of the galaxy. Remember, it's almost the age of the universe. The asterisk is because there's a component of the halo that uh, I have not discussed here. It's been recently discovered, and we'll discuss it when the time comes.